Hello guys, so today I'm going to go through Cambridge IGCSE Additional Mathematics version 0606 paper 1. This is paper May June 2019 and you only need 2 hours. So get your calculators and let's start. Question 1a. On the Venn diagram below, shade the region indicated. Bracket A intersect B, bracket union C. This means that the part where A and B overlaps, which is this part here. And everything of C is included, which is this. So you have to shade all of C plus the part where A overlaps B. A not or complement union B bracket intersect C. This means a not means a not or complement means the part where a is not included, which is the outside and these three parts. Union with B. Union means all or everything of B, which is these four parts here. So even though it includes some of A, that doesn't matter because this means everything of B, no matter what. Bracket intersect C. Out of this part, you have to look at which of these parts intersect C or overlaps C. So as you can see, it's this line here plus this line here. It is not this line because this is A0 union B. So you have to shade this part here. And then you have to get an eraser and erase this part. Question B. On the Venn diagram below, draw sets P, Q, and R such that P is a subset of R, Q is a subset of R, and P intersect Q is nothing. So what does this tell you? This tells you that P is part of R. So a subset can also mean part of something. So if P is part of R, it means P is inside R. Q is also part of R, but P and Q they don't overlap because intersect is equals to nothing. So P intersect Q is nothing. So how do you draw this? You can draw this by drawing the P and Q first. So P and Q doesn't intersect. So you can just draw two circles, label them P and Q. As you can see, they are not overlapping. So they're not intersecting, which means it equals to nothing. And P is a subset of R and Q is also a subset of R. This means that they're both part of R. So what you can do is, you can circle the whole thing and label the big circle R. Moving on to question 2. Question 2i. Write down the amplitude of 4 sine 3x minus 1. So this means that you have to get the amplitude of this equation. Amplitude is the number which is in front of the trigonometric function. And in this case, it is 4 because it is in front of the trigonometric function sine 3x. So the answer is 4. Write down the period of 4 sine 3x minus 1. So for period, you have to use this equation, which is period equals to 360 divided by the coefficient of x or the number which is in front of x which in this case is 3 and now the answer will be 120 degrees and part 3 on the axis below sketch the graph of y equals to 4 sine 3x minus 1 for negative 90 degrees is less than or equal to x degrees which is less than or equal to 90 degrees so to do this, the easiest way is to use your calculator. So what I usually do is I get my calculator here and I will type in the whole equation out. So it's y equals to 4 sine 3x minus 1. So I type in y equals to 4 sine 3x bracket minus 1. After writing this equation, I would click on this button on your calculator and you can see uh, the calculator shows what the x value should be. 
So I type in, well, in the question it says, for the equation, for the range, negative 90 degrees, which less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 90 degrees. So my first value would just be 90, negative 90 degrees. So if x is negative 90, the y value will be 3. So I'll go to my graph and plot down 3. So x is negative 90, and y will be, so y will be 3. And I'll plot it with a cross. And you can just continue this trend. So the next value will be negative 60 on the graph. So I just press the call button on my calculator, and I type in negative 60, and click on equals. And it says it's negative 1. So I plot on the graph, negative 60 is negative 1 on y, the y-axis. So that's the answer. And now, just press coke, negative 30 equals negative 5. So if x is negative 30, y will be negative 5. So I'll plot it down just like that. And also, if x is 0, then y is negative 1, which is the, which is also known as the y-intercept. So I'll plot it down there. And if x is 30, press coke and equals if x is 30, y is 3. And also if x is 60, press coke and 6, 0 equals to negative 1. If press coke button, if x is 90, y will be negative 5. So I would plot down the last point negative 5. Okay, so basically what you have to do is you just have to trace these points that you have just drawn and just remember not to make it like too sharp just try to like make it look natural or something like that and then like that Something like that. Yep, there we go. Do not continue from 90 because this is only from the range of x values from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees. And always erase out your mistakes and draw them out again. Just like that. And there you have it. There is the graph. Question 3. The polynomial px equals 2 bracket 2x minus 1 bracket x plus k bracket minus 12 where k is a constant. Part 1. Write down the value of p bracket minus k bracket. This means that you have to substitute the value of minus k inside the equation. So what you have to do is p bracket minus k and now you have to substitute the x values inside the k so you have to do 2 bracket minus k minus 1 minus k plus k minus 12 and as you can see k minus k plus k is basically 0 so since if there is two brackets just facing one another, this means that it is multiplication here. So this basically means my negative 2k, negative 1, times 0, minus 12. So anything which is times 0 is, well, 0, so it should be, the answer is negative 12. Part 2. When px is divided by x plus 3, the remainder is 23. Find the value of k. So for this question, you have to put x plus 3 is equal to 0. And now, x is negative 3. 
So this equation, it means that when x equals to negative 3, the remainder is 23. So it, you have to substitute the negative 3 value inside the equation. So what you have to do is, you have to put negative 3 equals 2, 2 negative 3, negative minus 1, bracket negative 3 plus k minus 12 is equal to 23. And from here, negative 6, negative minus 1, negative 3 plus k equals 2. If you move over the minus 12 to the other side, you get 23 plus 12. Let me just cut that out. And then from here, minus 7, minus 3 plus k equals to 35 because 23 plus 12 is 35 and from here you just expand the equation 7 times 3 which is 21 and minus 7 plus k is minus 7k which is equals to 35 so minus 7k equals to 35 minus 21 which is minus 7k equals to 14 and now from here k equals to minus 2 that is your answer and part 3 using your value of k show that the equation px equals to minus 25 has no real solutions so for this question, you have to first substitute the k value that you found in part 2, which is minus 2, inside your px equation. So now px is equal to 2x minus 1 and x minus 2 minus 12. And for this, you have to expressly expand the equation. So 2x minus 1, 2x times x is 2x squared, 2x times minus 2 is, this times this is, 2x is 4x, minus 4x, minus 1 times x is minus x, minus 1 times minus 2 is positive 2, minus 12, equals 2, 2x squared, minus 5x, minus 10. And now you get this equation. And when you read the question again, it says, show that the equation px equals to minus 25 has no real solutions. So to do this, you have to first equate your equation to minus 25. And now you have to arrange it. 5x minus 10 plus 25 equals to 0. 2x squared minus 5x plus 15 equals to 0. And now you have to, to show that px, px has no real solutions. You have to use the discriminant equation of a quadratic function. So the equation is b squared minus 4ac. So since it has no real solutions, b squared minus 4ac should be less than 0. So if our calculations were correct, and after we sub in, which, so if b, b is minus 5 squared, minus 4a is 2, and c is 15. This less, should be less than 0. So if we do this, 25 minus 15 times 4 is 60, times 2 is... 120 less than 0 and then let me just move this over here so 25 minus 120 that would be so let me get my calculator 
25 minus 120 is minus 95 so minus 95 is less than 0 well this is true so since minus 95 is less than 0 we can say that px equals to minus 25 has no real roots And that is your answer. And for the exam, by the way, you have to write this down. You have to write this down. Because if you only end it here, you will only get two marks out of three. Because after writing this down, it shows the examiner that you really understand what it means to have no real solution.